What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Door Kickers 2 Task Force North. In this series, we've been applying realistic military and CQB tactics that is real doctrine informed by real life to this game. This game is called Door Kickers 2 Task Force North. And if you enjoy what you're watching here and you haven't yet purchased the game, but you'd like to get your hands on a copy of it, you can grab a copy over off of my game store at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. If you buy the game over there, you get a Steam key right away. You can go over to Steam and download the game. And then a portion of the sale will benefit me and my channel directly. I'm very grateful for each of you who choose to purchase this game or any of your other favorites that you see on the channel over off of my Nexus game store. Today we're taking a look at a level called A Pair of Eights. A Pair of Eights is one of the newer levels that was released in the latest update which added night operations and night vision and laser aiming devices to the game. And our mission today is to secure and extract an enemy HVT alive from somewhere on this map that is a high value target capture operation. And then we also have the optional mission of eliminating all of the terrorists on this map. And we always start these missions by taking a look at the battlefield and performing what's called intelligence preparation of the battlefield. We do some terrain analysis and some enemy analysis, and we try to get an idea of how we think the enemy might fight us. And only then, once we make a guess, an educated one at that, informed by our analysis of the terrain and what we think the enemy has got, only at that point, once we have an idea of how we think they're gonna fight us, can we then select the right troops and the right gear to execute the right plan to overcome the enemy that we have analyzed. So what we'll do is kind of just work directly across the map, take a look at what we are seeing and what I think it could mean for the operation that follows. And then we will get to planning. Uh, we'll just move straight from left to right. So um, it is nighttime, obviously. We do have some street lights and likely some ambient light. We are in the city. It means there's also the risk of passing traffic and there's evidence that vehicles do in fact move around the area because they are parked all over the street. The street is paved, which means we're, you know, in a, a relatively urban area, certainly a, an area of the world that can one, afford nice paved roads and two, afford the electricity to illuminate those paved roads. Um, that also means there could be some nightlife and there also could be neighbors or other people active in the area. If we kind of look around, we see graded fences, um, gated off areas. This could be somewhere as nice as even a gated community, just kind of looking at how nice the target compound is and how nice some of the surrounding area is. If we actually start to look at the target compound, first we notice a large obstacle that surrounds the target compound on all sides. And target compound is actually two compounds. Um, and the other one is also surrounded by a large wall. But if you look closely, some of that wall is graded, which means the enemy inside would have a clear line of sight to us should we move past some of those graded fences and expose ourselves, particularly in areas of ambient light, like observed right here. If we begin to start looking inside again, just from right to left, or excuse me, from left to right, uh, lawn chairs, pool, it's again, um, you know, indicating to me that there is very likely, you know, a, a high degree of uh, affluence on our target compound here. There's, these are people with money and means. If you have money and means, that means you likely have weapons and the ability to defend all of these nice things that you possess. If we start to look at the target compound itself, um, you know, the kind of a nice office space and uh, it's not even an office space. It looks like a reading room or something like that, a lounge room, um, because there's actually a large pane of glass right here. So if you were to spawn here, wall breach through here, you'd immediately be exposed to this open glass. Now, if I'm the enemy, you know, that would be an opportunity for me to begin engaging you before you're prepared for it. Um, wooden doors don't appear to be locked on either side of that room. A big lounge area or meeting area in here kind of reminds me, um, I guess the chairs would be outside of the regular pattern of life, but it looks almost like a Shura room or a meeting room. Um, and you get a similar vibe up here. This looks like a master bedroom, nice rug thrown down there in the center. We've got bathrooms for each of these spaces. Long hallway, um, looks like the primary breach to this, you know, I'll, I'll call it Western objective is right here. And it opens straight into this big fatal funnel. So fatal funnel is a uh, term we use to describe areas that attract bullets. So in this case, this threshold is a funnel 
where if there's people defending from here or from here or from here or even just you know in the hallway and they're firing all of their rounds are going to be funneled through this choke point that's a high threat area for me to be hanging out in the same is true of this threshold um, again, a big kind of fatal funnel in this hallway. Hallway is super dangerous. Not a lot of chances to get out of that hallway. If we look closer over here, it looks like a storage area. Nothing, um, you know, that comes to mind just kind of glancing at this that, that seems out of the ordinary. Um, but it's locked for whatever reason. So it's a storage area full of junk. So important that it is locked. <laughs> uh, the main space in this compound is kind of like the living area. Um, so we got a couch, fan, one, two, three, four places to sit, kitchen, another, there's another uh, master bedroom up here. So we have two major bedrooms. This actually one looks even larger, larger bathrooms to boot. And then finally garage. Um, interestingly, it looks like they're painting in here. You got paint sitting on the hood of this vehicle. Kind of like when I'm looking around, I'm wondering... Why are we painting? What's going on? There's a there's a workbench here. It looks like there's a drill uh, drill press or a clamp or something right there. Um, this door is locked. Okay. So overall, like I don't see a, a high degree or a, a major military signature at all in this compound. I don't. Um, but what I do see is oh look down here. You've got a uh, a fuse box. So if we're able to get in here and hit this fuse box, we'll kill the lights in this compound. Is kind of how I read that. Um, so it's interesting to me that this compound is in play at all because I don't see a military signature having kind of done our cursory investigation of it. However, if we continue to move east, this place looks like it is going to be a freaking bloodbath. Um, straight away we see, um, you know, we talked about the open grate up top. So any enemy that's hanging out in the courtyard is going to be able to see us, especially if we expose ourselves to the light right here. So that's a challenge. Um, additionally, you've got two vehicles, both up armored in the courtyard. We've talked about this in the past, but a common, you know, TTP or tactic technique procedure that we've seen around the world is people who are creating these improvised armored vehicles are often doing so to protect the driver so that that driver can deliver this vehicle close to a target and then detonate it as a vehicle borne improvised explosive device. So these could be, you know, troop uh, carriers. They could also be vehicle borne improvised explosive devices. Either way, they're very clearly improvised armored vehicles intended for military use. And we'll consider that, you know, a high threat area as a result of that. Even worse down here, we see yet another vehicle um, that is also an improvised armored vehicle, but we see sandbags. So this is a, an area that they are prepared to defend. There's a defensive fighting position or a battle position oriented right here. My suspicion is there's also probably a, a belt fed or a heavy weapon system or a sentry hanging out in this area at all times watching through this gate because they're expecting, should they be raided, that raid to come from the main entrance up top. That means we're not going through the main entrance up top. That's why we perform enemy analysis. Um, so super dangerous area. We're going to call that an engagement area. We're going to call this entire courtyard an engagement area based off of this battle position, this military signature, and the ambient light that illuminates that engagement area so that you are fired upon should you enter into it. If we look closer into the garage, you know, wooden crates, definitely not a civilian sort of appearance. Um, we know they're manufacturing V-bids or at least improvised armored vehicles, so I'm suspecting vehicle parts, slat armor, um, I haven't seen any indications of weapons, despite indications of a lot of other stuff. Um, continue to look through the rest of the house. Imp you know, it's a bathroom, but it's kind of a shanty-ish bathroom. Um, there's drapes here, but the drapes can easily be moved, which means if someone were to kind of move into the bathroom, they could pull the drapes back and also fire into what we're calling the engagement area here. Um, there's no drapes on this window at all. It seems like a little office. Uh, from the office, they can observe both this door or out this window and again move over here and fire into this engagement area or fight from the hallway towards the main breach which is right here this entire structure is heavily 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 fortified which which means we're going to be extraordinarily violent in our clearance um, you've got bunkers built up inside so these are people that are expecting to fight it out and slug it out uh, and they have created battle positions internal to their structure so that they can fight a, you know, a defense in depth from inside this thing. And if you look closer, we've got a locked door, locked door, locked door, locked door. These are people who want to fight and die, and they have set up the uh, the means to do that and to cause a lot of freaking damage throughout that process. So we're going to be, it's going to be tough. Right now, just looking at this, the two biggest challenges we're going to have is like one, not killing 
the high value target and then two not killing you know any uh any civilians that might also be on this battlefield but more on that in a second so uh more evidence of defensive defensive fighting positions here and here lots of locked doors which means we need lots of methods of breaching um another bedroom here tank of an unknown substance outside there's your fuse box so we can kill the lights inside and then kill these people in the dark if they don't have nods themselves lots of trash and stuff in the back looks like it's difficult to tell it looks like those might be like car parts exhaust stuff like that um more cover down here and then of note look at this yet is that another fuse box or is that just ambient light Looks like ambient light, but we see like engine cranes here, more workbenches, freaking circular saw. Um, so just taking a look at this, like how do we then assess this? How do we think the enemy is going to fight or, or what do we think their pattern of life is? Um, well, I think that this is an area they're comfortable in. You don't get to have a big ass military signature like this unless you feel like you're pretty safe from law enforcement or military intervention. So they're comfortable. That means they probably also have mutually supporting elements that are off map somewhere. That means uh, I can expect counterattacks coming from this direction, certainly along these high-speed avenues of approach. We see the hardball road. We see all these vehicles, and I, I absolutely then expect a counterattack. Um, you know, footpath here could make sense. Um, I think that our HVI is, and you'll have to just trust me on this one, I think our HVI is going to be located here because I believe that this is a familial compound meaning I believe that that is a location where our high value individual lives with his family. Uh, I think he probably has some bodyguards there and I think that they probably guard him throughout the night. Uh, but I don't think he does his business here. I think he does his business over here because I see a high military slant evidence of vehicle, uh, you know, improvised uh, explosive device and, and improvised vehicle manufacturing going on um, and, and a really dangerous military signature. So I think this is a dude who lives with his family over here at night um and then when he's working he comes over here to work i think you've got a um, you know platoon ish sized element likely working over here with a quick reaction force off map somewhere that's prepared to reinforce them uh, and i think you have probably a squad or a team sized element of bodyguards securing the hvi and his family over here um, with that said we are going to deliberately clear this building first to try to find our hvi and get him to the extraction zone. Remember, our mission is to get him out alive. We have the optional mission of eliminating all the terrorists. So if we find him, we'll take him and leave. Um, and then all the terrorists are over here. If we if we complete clearance of this objective and we are unable to locate our HVI, um, only then do I feel comfortable uh, at that point pushing uh, over here into this structure. Um, so how are we going to accomplish all this? Well. If that's my general scheme maneuver, what I know I need to do is I need at least one battle position up here um, to pull security this direction in this direction because I believe that we're going to face a counterattack at some point and this battle position is going to be responsible for providing early warning of that counterattack and then interdicting them with fires um, so that our assault element can maneuver on them. Uh, with the rest of my element, I, I do want to try to go quiet. The challenge is going to be, so what I'll do is I'll go primary breach right here. If I can't get through this primary breach uncompromised, um, I will go alternate breach. I don't want to go through that large gate either. If you're uncompromised, we might be able to get in. I'm going to go primary breach, alternate breach, and then once I'm in, I'm actually going to clear external. Um, I'll pie this. I'll pie this. And I'm going to work to the fuse box over here. Actually, screw that. We'll go garage. Yeah. We'll go garage. I wish you could get in quiet. The only way to get in quiet looks like right there. Hmm. Okay, we'll try to find quiet met methods of breaching, get in here or here. Goal is to get through here, kill the fuse box and perform a surreptitious or silent clear of this structure. Um, once it's clear and secure, if we get our HVI, we'll take him back to the evac. If we don't get our HVI, we will move to violently clear this guy. That's a problem from when we get there. I'm gonna go ahead and set the team and then we'll get started in just a moment. All right, in our first move here, we're going to establish our battle position at the corner of the vehicle that we arrived in, pulling long. We're going to pull security down to the bottom of the map as well. We're also going to pull rear security. Uh, my first assault element is going to start moving up towards the target breach right here. Primary breach is right there. Again, we're going to see if we can um, actually bypass this. If we can, we're going to try to go silently through the large gate. Um, seems like a long shot. We'll give it a go. Here we go.
I were in a pie with one man pulling along with the others. We do have one enemy right there. We have not yet been compromised. We'll see if we can go ahead and move across quickly. And I'll actually bring up the rest of this assault element as well. So we know there's one patrol external. We'll hold that angle, knowing there's a bad guy there. Be very, very careful to see when he comes back, because he's going to come back on his patrol route. Now, be, take good care to pull rear security, and then we'll also bring the rest of our assault element to right here. And then our battle position will go right there. Again, everyone's still being told to stay quiet. We want to get off this street as fast as we can. Exceptionally dangerous right here where we're at. Um, this is a graded opening, so we are going to try to get in here quick. Again, the goal is going to be to get in and then work clearing the external of the home all the way to the rear breach. It's a long movement and a, a difficult route to take and remain uncompromised, but we're going to try and do exactly that. All right, Matt Getters here at Beach Feed. You're kind of last in the shoot. We'll come back up and pull security for them real quick. All right, we're looking good there. We're going to get them across. All right, the stack is set. We'll go ahead and try to get in surreptitiously here. We'll start with a center check deep. We'll hold this center check to allow for the breach to come in and button hook. As soon as he comes in, he's going to hold here. This is an open window, so our next man in the stack will actually turn the corner and hold that this is where it's going to start getting challenging for us we'll hold we'll get these guys in after we have a foothold we'll start moving the rest of the stack see if we can stay quiet all right we got the door open quietly we've got good eyes on the flimsy door here we'll move up into cover maintain that angle drapes are still up we are still in compromise Okay, now we're bounding, right? So we've got good security here, good security here. We can get the rest of the stack inside and allow our battle position to provide external security for us. We know we're going to make contact here. It's just a matter of when. All right, next threat here is going to be this window. Challenge is we're going to have to clear this window while also pulling long security. I'm going to do this with two men. Open breach here. We have a security guy here that has not spotted us yet. That open breach is a challenge, though. We need one additional gun up with a quickness to pull long. This dude's going to hold. Hold. Now we've got another guy that can pie the rest of this room off for us.
All right, now we know that room is clear. The exception of this door. So we'll hold those two doors and hold long and start moving the rest of the stack up here in just a second. One mover external. I think we're going to have to try and take him quietly if we can. I am going to go ahead and authorize that shot. Otherwise, we're going to end up having to shoot him with a loud gun outside. We shot him with a loud gun in the courtyard. I didn't realize that was an unsuppressed gun. All right, we made noise. That's not good. So we are going to give him a buddy. Because now we're expecting an attack or a counterattack or a noise response here. I'm also expecting both these doors to open. Still want to get to this light box or the fuse box and see if we can get it disabled and perform a surreptitious clear the rest of this compound or at least cause enough, you know, of a uh, cause enough of an issue for them with the darkness that they're unable to interfere with what we're trying to do. Yep, there's the one. All right, you got two guys up here. Neither one of them have to be quiet anymore. They're here. So we've been compromised. But we're still doing okay. They don't know that we're on their flank. All right, another big challenge here. We got a large open space. It's going to be very difficult to pie and pull long at the same time. I'm worried about that counterattack now, right? Because uh, we've killed a couple guys. We've been loud, so that counterattack timer has started. Presuming, of course, they understand that they are under attack. There's our HVI right there. He is where we kind of thought he was, so that's good. We don't want him to squirt, though. I've got a glass door here, so we may try to take this breach, actually. I like this, I like this, I like this, so I'm going to have to figure it out with these guys. Um, this room is clear, so I don't need to hold it anymore. I'm going to pull wide. We've got to maintain security on our HVI. We've got to watch this breach, this breach, this breach, and this breach. And then theoretically, we could see ladders or even an explosive breach from enemy over here. We have a, Remember, there's an enemy platoon next door. These guys are all potentially responding right now. We need to get this HVI and get the hell off the target as fast as possible. Um... One of the ways I think I might be able to do that, I might try to put an explosive breach over here in a second to get us out quicker. Um, if I just go explosive with, let's say, let's just do it like that. Uh, and that should protect his flank, right? So he's setting his charge. This dude's going to have his flank. That charge, once it's set, is going to give us an exit route so we can get right up to this location without having to run through all that again. Um, and uh, yeah, so we'll see how that goes. I do have to hold this dude. I'm going to try to get him out this glass door if I can. Uh, but i got to be able to watch all these other angles. So this is going to be a challenge. He also could squirt on me, right? Like, he could run. And if he runs deeper into the compound, uh, that becomes a huge, huge challenge. And remember, we're also calling this a familial compound. So there's potentially women and or children in this area that we don't want to harm. All right, hold this. So there's one door right there. There's two doors there. What are you pointing at? Don't you run, you son of a bitch. All right, we're breaching with twos. We've got security on a couple of the doors, not all of them. We're in. Breach is getting set. Get on him, my dude. Watch these breaches, dude. Cuff him. Hold the angle for him. Primary target secure. All right, he's secured. We're going to get him out right away. We'll stage him right here behind that for cover during the explosive breach. Everyone will collapse with him. 
We're looking for that counterattack now for sure. I'm also going to start pulling these dudes back. Where's that damn counterattack? I know it's coming. Go ahead and collapse. Alright, we're going to go ahead and detonate this thing. Breach is open. We'll lead out with two assaulters to provide left and right security. Once they're out, we'll have one more collapse with front security. We've got our battle position already established up top. Once he's out, we'll get our HVI out. Widen up his sector. I'm going to allow everyone to go loud now. Drummer's going to start moving now with our HVI. I'll stage him right there. Beach Feej also move in with the HVI, so he's got a PSD. It's a personal security detachment with him. The goal is to keep this asshole alive. As frustrating as that task is... HVI is moving, our last elements are collapsing while holding their sectors. Minnow will be the last man. Shooter. Jesus Christ. You know there's going to be more, so I'm actually going to Put one into cover for me. I'm going to have Minnow hold here for a second until he gets another battle buddy established so they can bound back more effectively. Alright, he's set. He'll sprint to there. These guys are all still working up top. My right, last man's out. Everyone's collapsing up top. Exfil, exfil, exfil. Always someone pulling rear security. No need to run quite yet. All right, now we got to make moves to get our boy. All right, that'll be condition set to get our HVI all the way home. Get everyone in the trucks and get out of here, huh? There's that counterattack. Huge ass counterattack. Machine guns rocking right away. Rent to cover right here and get that shit posted up. This is going to be a, a freaking challenge, guys. This is why we've got what we've got, right? Like, I, oh, God. I am going to hold the HVT for one second to get the smoke out. All right, suppression's going out, smoke's going out, sniper's going to work as well. Our battle position's now doing what we asked of them. There's that counterattack right there. Smoke is getting set. Mark 18 online, and then the Mark 48's rocking. These two guns are just too short. I'm waiting for the uh, that smoke to build a little bit for us. Do we have good rear security still? That shit matters. Now, where's an AT4? If you have to exit under duress, at least do it violently. Have fun with that. 
back blast area clear. AT4 going out. Grenade going out. All right, clear for our HVI to exfil. Let's get out of here, buddy. Nice work, boys. Could y'all stop that nonsense? Come with me. Thank you. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would say that that's that is our mission accomplished, despite having not yet. Um, kill all the enemies that was an optional objective i'm going to say that's mission complete because that's what you'd likely do in real world you'd exfil uh yeah you under real world circumstances you'd leave here and then you look for other solutions to um to eliminate the rest of the enemy on the ground a pair of eights means there's two enemy high value targets despite the abduction task saying secure and extract the enemy hvt singular alive which we did uh, so we get Chipped out of a dope ass replay unfortunately this go around uh sorry guys but i hope you did enjoy the video i did enjoy the level how about this? I'll go back and play it through and hook you guys up with a replay of the complete run that I do after the fact. Um, but if you did enjoy this, this game is fantastic. It's still in early access, believe it or not, even though it is already so well polished and so much fun. And if you'd like to get it, your hands on it, you can go over to my game store again at nexus.gg slash controlled pairs gaming. Purchase a copy of it over there. It supports me directly. Super grateful for each of you who choose to buy the game over there. My name is Controlled Pairs, and I play the most immersive tactical shooters and combat sims in the world. This one is called Door Kickers 2 Task Force North. I'll see you in the next one.
Alpha, go. Alpha, go. 